Hello friends! Um, I'm pretty excited because this is our first history lesson on my YouTube channel and I am a big history nerd and I love teaching history because it's like a storytelling subject so basically I just get to tell you stories and call that my job um, and I think that's awesome and I love it. Um, so this was actually the very first request I received when I started my YouTube channel. I had like it was the night I posted the first video a student was like, Miss Laird, I have a request. I want you to teach a history lesson in Laird style about cowboys. And I was like, cowboys? Anything specifically cowboy related? Like any specific cowboy or anything like that? And she was like, nope. I just like cowboys. Please teach us a history lesson about cowboys. And I love this student dearly. And so I was like, okay, I'll do it. But that's a super broad topic, so it's taken me a while to get it together. Um, also, just got to say that I absolutely love the fact that one of my students requested that I teach something on my YouTube channel. Like, I can't even tell you how much joy that gives me that a kid actually wanted me to teach something. Um, so I don't know if anybody will watch this, but this is Cowboys with Miss Laird. Um, so, like I said, the cowboy topic, that's very broad. Um, very, very broad, probably more broad than some people even realize. And so it took me some time to figure out kind of what direction I was going to go with that. Um, but I have figured it out, but real quick, I'm going to give you a brief timeline. It won't be boring. I'll be really fast, but I just want to make sure that we know what we're talking about. So timeline of cowboys. Um, here's the deal. Even though cowboys are traditionally like an American staple, um, cowboys are not originally an American thing. So the cowboy tradition actually came from Spain, like in the 1500s, and um, some of those techniques and things, they think they actually might have learned from Islamic nations, but like really like the cowboy tradition started in Spain, um, using horses to round up cattle and all that kind of stuff. When Spain started coming to the Americas and conquering parts of the Americas, they brought with them cattle and horses, all the ingredients you need for a cowboy. Um, so horses and those types of things, those are actually not native to this area. There was like a horse-like creature, but it was extinct. And so like the Spanish actually brought horses to the Americas and that's how they got here. And so then as the Spanish conquered um, parts of both North and South America and Central America, um, they started those traditions here. Um, the area of Spain that was under Spanish control um, that then was part of Mexico that is now part of the United States. Um, that area had a lot of uh, cowboy activity. Um, when Mexico won their independence from Spain, um, then that cowboy tradition was continued in Mexico. Um, those skills that, you know, lassoing and rounding up cattle and cattle driving and all those types of things those were continued on by Mexico. And then when the part, the area that was Northern Mexico became like Southwestern United States, then Americans learned those cowboy skills from the cowboys from Mexico who had been there previously. And so that's how you got the American cowboy. All right, so that's kind of our timeline. The, the height of the cowboy era in the United States, like the Wild West and all of that, that was mostly from mid 1800s to early 1900s. The peak of that was right after the Civil War ended um, into the uh, early 1900s. So there's your timeline so you know what time we're talking about and where cowboys actually came from because I think that's important. Give credit where credit's due. Oh, speaking of giving credit where credit's due, all of the information I'm sharing with you either came from my brain and the information that I already had in there about cowboys, which who knows where I got that from. I am a history teacher, so there's a lot of sources. I also fact-checked myself on history.com um, and I also read some entertaining articles on mental floss and top tens so I just want to give credit where credit's due for that. Um, so this is just like a smorgasbord of resources. So there you go. How's that word for you? So here's what I decided to do with my very broad cowboy topic. I decided to teach you guys a few things that people think about cowboys that are not actually true, which you might already know, but I'm going to share it with you anyway. A couple things about cowboys that you might have not known, and then I'm going to tell you one creepy cowboy story that you probably won't recognize the cowboy, but the story is awesome. All right, so that's where we're going today, and it will hopefully not take too long, and hopefully it'll keep you entertained. All right, 
Um, cowboy misconception number one. Most cowboys did not carry guns. We think of cowboys as like gunslingers. We have the, the cowboy movies and they're having shootouts all the time and whatever. But actually, um, cowboys pretty much only carried a gun if they were actually on a cattle drive and needed a gun to keep them safe from predators. Um, most towns during the like Wild West era actually had really strict gun control laws and you had to like check your gun in with the sheriff before you could come into the town because they were trying to avoid shootouts. The whole like OK Corral thing was actually um, lawmen trying to enforce the gun laws because most towns actually had really strict gun laws for that exact reason. So for those reasonings, most cowboys didn't actually have guns. Sorry to crush all your cowboy movie dreams. Um, so there's one fact. Um, cowboy fact number two that you may or may not know. Um, there were actually a ton of cowboys that did not ride horses. I know, I'm just crushing your whole cowboy picture. Um, I will say that most cowboys did ride horses because their primary job, of course, was to round up cattle. Um, actually, the reason cowboys were so, like, like the Wild West was so popular right after the Civil War ended is because the North had exhausted pretty much all their sur uh, supplies of beef during the Civil War, and now they were trying to restock. And so cowboys were paid to drive cattle to train stations, sell the cattle, and then the cattle would be taken on train to the North, um, or they would drive the cattle all the way to the North um, to be sold so that people could eat meat again after the Civil War. So there you go. There's a bonus fact for you. All right. Um, but uh, as the time of the cowboy kind of started to come to a close, there was an especially difficult winter and then a kind of a really dry season. And some people started to actually keep their uh, cows closer to home um, rather than driving them uh, to all the places. And, you know, as railroads expanded more, it was easier to transport. And so as that started to happen, there was less need for cowboys to actually herd cattle. And during that time, they didn't ride horses at all. They did super exciting things like mend fences, um, check on the cows, um, and, you know, make sure they were being fed and a bunch of super not exciting tasks like that. Um, cowboys didn't really like that work, we don't think, um, but it was work that was done that did not involve riding horses, so not all cowboys rode horses. Um, there you go. Um, speaking of horses, this is my favorite fact. Okay, I have visual aids for this one. Normally I would draw on the whiteboard, but I can't draw on the whiteboard because I don't have one. Horse. I don't want this horse. I mean, look at him. Okay, when we think of cowboys, we think of horses, right? But how many of you have considered that beautiful time in the Old West when the cowboys rode in on camels? I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. Cow, camels, cowls, no, camels. There were actually a lot of cowboys who rode camels instead of horses. Here's why. In the 1850s, there was this dude who was like, hey, U.S. government, horses are having a hard time in all the heat in the Texas area in particular. It's really hot and dry here, and horses need water, and they're struggling. But you know what does really well in hot temperatures with not a lot of access to water? Camels. That's right. Camels. They were made for this kind of desert land. So we should definitely buy a bunch of camels and bring them over here and then try to breed them because they do much better here uh, than horse horses do. And the US government was like, all right, we can test this out. So they bought 75 camels. That's right, we brought 75 camels to Texas. And um, we brought them to Camp uh, Verde. And those camels were like, you know, living their camel life there. People were starting to domesticate them and like break them so they could be ridden. And just as that happened, the Civil War started. Uh, once they got them all here and settled, the Civil War started. And um, so then that became actually a Union base for a time, but the Confederacy took over that camp. And when the Confederates took over, they released all the camels. They just let them go into the wilderness, not wilderness, but into Texas, whatever that is. Uh, I should know, I lived there for a while, but you know, 
Um, so they released all of the camels into Texas, and so now we had wild camels in the United States for a time. And so during the Wild West and during the cowboy era, lots of the cowboys would catch a wild camel, domesticate it, break it, train it, and then they would ride camels instead of riding horses. So there were lots of cowboys who were riding around on camelback instead of on horseback. That's probably my favorite fact about cowboys. It's a really good visual. I feel like that should be in more cowboy movies. Someone make a movie with cowboys riding camels. Okay, maybe there's already one and I just don't know about it. Probably that's the case. Um, uh, two other facts about cowboys that are brief. There were a ton of African-American cowboys, um, which I feel like don't get enough time in movies either, um, especially after the Civil War because um, when slavery became illegal, when slavery was abolished, um, there were all these slaves now, former slaves, um, who were looking for work. Um, and unfortunately, because a lot of them had been in slavery, um, a lot of them didn't have, like they had tons of practical skills, but couldn't, a lot of them were illiterate. So it was sort of hard to apply for jobs um, kind of in the North and stuff. And there was still a lot of racism, but one of the jobs um, that was readily available uh, were, was cowboy, being a cowboy, going to the West and becoming a cowboy. So there were tons of African-American cowboys, which I think is awesome who were like living in freedom, making money, and I just think that would have been amazing. Um, and then one more fun fact is that outlaws during the Old West loved advertising themselves. Yeah, in my mind, not smart. You're like, hey, law, I broke you. Um, but whatever. Um, so cowboys like notoriously, Jesse James and Billy the Kid loved advertising like the bank robberies that they pulled off and all those types of things and they would like exaggerate the details to make it sound like what they did was worse than what they actually did um and they would like make posters and post them around and stuff which i think is hilarious thank goodness that there was no social media back there uh, back then i mean um so there you go there's some facts about cowboys and then one more thing i told you there would be a gross story so here it is there was an outlaw who was not famous at all his name was elmer elmer mccurdy Elmer McCurdy. He was a train robber and a bank robber, and he actually died in a shootout with the law. So that scene from the cowboy movies that I told you didn't happen very often did happen with this guy. Um, so he died in a shootout with the law because he was never going to surrender. And like no one really knew who he was. He was no Jesse James. He was no Billy the Kid. Maybe he didn't advertise himself as well. I don't know. But um, in any case, he wasn't famous until 60 years after he died. There was a TV show called The Six Million Dollar Man, and they apparently filmed an episode in like some sort of fun house, like at an amusement park or a carnival or something like that. And I've heard, I've read several versions of this story, but all with the same basic details. But essentially, there was a dummy in the fun house and someone bumped into it and realized it was not a dummy, it was a mummy. That's right, in the fun house, there was a mummy and when they did an autopsy on it, they realized it was the mummy of Elmer McCurdy. How disgusting is that? Okay, so I just feel like that justifies my fear of like puppets and mannequins and stuff like that because this funhouse had a real dead dude in it. That's so gross. How many people saw that and touched that? Like I can't even. Well. All right, so beware of funhouses now. All right, so there are my, that's my history lesson about cowboys for you. If you have any questions or any other history lessons you would like me to teach you, um, hit me up because, you know, I love history. It's my favorite thing to teach because it's just a bunch of stories that are fun. And um, I hope you enjoyed this and that it wasn't too boring. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. And I will see you all soon. Bye, guys.